a sustained a business before this giant surge of hype has engulfed us all with the emergence of Oculus. So let's see here. So I'm going to show you development of a simple app using our VR toolkit. And the app I'll show you here is a, is a minimalist flying app. And the flying, we've done variants of this for many years. Here's some collaborators, some of my colleagues who have, have come before me and who have worked on this and spent some time thinking about how to do it. And so I'm standing on their shoulders here. And what I've gone and done is created something that I think would be a nice way to, to show off our, our development platform, Vizard, and also a nice thing to share. So after the talk, um, after we go through some things, I'm happy to share uh, this app. You're also welcome to come try it during the open demo session. So three things to talk about. First, I'll say a few things about why flying is nice. Then I will, I'll step away from the speaker here. <laughs> then I'll share this, this concept that I'm pretty excited about and a little proud of, this minimalist flyer concept, which is a cool way, I think it's, it's the minimum ingredients to get a, a compelling flying navigation technique going. And then I'll show you how something like this is built with Vizard. So, personally, my favorite reason my favorite thing about flying is that it's not walking. <laughs> walking is really hard. Walking is something that, that we've tried to specialize in as a company over the past 12 years. We have this mm, expensive and um, somewhat cumbersome, I mean necessarily so, position tracking system. You, you have to make a lot of effort to get a reasonable solution for measuring the position of a user in a walking space. And we have this product and it, it tracks users over a wide area. But that's not so accessible to, to this community, and um, I'm happy to be a part of this community. So that's one reason why I'm excited about this: is that it's it's uh, has a much lower barrier to entry, and in many ways it's it's more fun. I mean, we walk all the time, so working really hard to simulate walking, mm, you can get a nice uh, bigger dose of emotion by working a little less hard and, and getting flying. So here's the minimalist flight concept. The controls for the flight are going to be your arms. You know, we can fly like a superhero. And we need to measure what your arms are doing. We could track their position, but remember the position tracking is, is a tough problem and it's hard. So an alternative is to use these inertial trackers. And I have here these, this are products from this company called In Innersense. They've been around for just about 10 years as well. They're two little inertial trackers, the same type of thing that you have inside the Oculus built in. And they measure your yaw pitch and your roll. And so the idea is, okay, you strap these to your arms and you know the orientation of your arms. Then your arms become the controls, your arms become the joysticks. And we're gonna take each arm and we'll say, okay, which way is that arm pointing? And, and we can produce this thing. I'll get a little mathematical here. So we'll produce an arm vector. We have two arm vectors, one for each arm, and we're gonna perform the vector addition. And we're gonna get a resultant vector between both of the arms. And that's what we're gonna be using for our velocity. So I find this really thrilling from a beautiful symmetry point of view. You, well, I put together a little visualization to aid in the, in the understanding of what's going on here. So I'll share that. And I'll tab over to the, uh, our toolkit, Vizard, and I'll run this little visualization. So we have a nice little coordinate system here. And I'll take control of the two, the, our two arms, right? And we can move the arms around independently. And we see, oh, a nice uh, resultant vector is calculated. So you can imagine, okay, the two gray arrows, those are the user's arms. And the yellow line, that's the resultant vector, that's the user's velocity, right? And the closer your arms are together, the greater your velocity. The, um, so when your arms are parallel, right, the velocity is maximum. And then you go to 180 degrees, anti-parallel, and your velocity is zero. So you have the ability to go fast in any direction, and you have the ability to hover. And all this in, gets me excited because you can do it in uh, such few lines of code. So there's, there's the visual for the vector addition. That's the concept. And we'll go back to the slides here. 
So once we have the velocity, we need to then move the user's position. And that's the easy part, right? You take the velocity and you say, okay, we're, we're moving at a certain velocity for a certain uh, frame duration, because we do this calculation every frame, and then you move the user's position accordingly. So that's, that's it, that's all you need to fly. I've, I've tested it, it works great. I mean, it's big fun. So for the bulk of the talk here, I'll go into a little bit about how something like this is built. This is kind of my day-to-day -day working environment here at Vizard, and this is our, our VR development environment. So we're on the fifth version of Vizard, and the fifth version, I was thinking about it the other day. I like to think about it in terms of the triple Venn diagram here. There's these two circles on the right side. Those are new to Vizard 5. So previously, in the first four versions, you just had the Python scripting and you create your, your virtual content, your virtual reality content that way. But now we have these two tools and these other two, build, and these other two bubbles. And I think they're big wins. And so nowadays, when I sit down to make some content in virtual reality. I'm working with, with all three of these bubbles. So I'm gonna show you the, the simple flying app and then we'll um, come back to the, to the bubbles here. So here is this, and I wonder just about what size would be appropriate so that you can see, let's see here. Ah, need a, Need a mouse to zoom in here. Don't remember the keyboard shortcut. So used to having a mouse. Okay. Pardon me one moment. I want you to be able to see this. Pardon me. Let's see here. Plug that in. You do your AV check, but you don't check everything. Let's see if this can connect. <laughs> it's Maybe we have a mouse. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Success. <laughs> you can see our expertise with these high tech devices here. Okay, so now we can zoom in. Maybe that's a little bit easier for you to read. Okay, now that I've zoomed, we can see a little bit better the IDE here. So we have our, our Python scripting here in the center, and when we build our virtual reality app, we need, um, we need models, we need our, our 3D assets. And so I'll pull those up and I'll show you a little bit about this, this scene editor, which is a new tool of ours. So for the flying app, we have put together a great little modern cityscape, sort of the ambiguous general city. And we pull this up, our, our platform is, um, the native format is open scene graph. So you can kind of think of this as, a, as an application for open scene graph editing and inspecting. And so if we wanted to, it's not the case right now, but if we wanted to modify this, say we had a last minute need to, to make an ad hoc change, we could select some things, we could inspect them, and, and we could modify them. So I would say, okay, this, this whole collection here, mm, not doing it for me, I might want to go and remove this from my model. And I think that's a big win because you have to do a fair bit of work to export something from your modeling program to get it into to the VR engine to run in real time. And so the, the ability for you to make these changes after it's all been exported, mm, I find is a big time saver. And pretty helpful mm, for the developer to know what he or she is doing. It's easy to kind of get lost in your virtual coordinates if you're putting something together. So the ability to inspect and modify is quite nice. I, don't want to get rid of those buildings, so I'll, I'll discard those changes as I close this out. Okay, and then the second, the second circle here is what I think is an, is an even bigger win for Visit 5, and that's the, the device configurator, which is this great code generator which allows for abstraction between the application you're making and the devices and the system configuration that you're running your application on. So this means you write your application, in our case a simple flying program, and you can run it on my configuration here, which is the DK1 and two of these Intersense trackers. Or I could run it on a different headset, a different HMD with different trackers. Maybe the, the Razer Hydra would be a good substitute, or maybe a, two joysticks or a keyboard. So I'll show you this configurator. We call it VizConnect. As I said, it's a code generator. So Really what we have here, these first two 
Python files, these are what is required for the app. You have the application script and the configuration script. And I'll show you how is a configuration script like this generated. It, in and of itself, is also a, a wizard script. It, um, when you run it, and you know, it's, a, it's just another Python script that was automatically generated. We have a preview window. Aha. Uh -huh. Which may be uh, not getting along so nice with our HDMI splitter. Let's see if we can manage to get to the interface. The display drivers are doing its thing. Bear with it. Okay, it's a preview window. The resolution is a little off, but please don't mind that. Our, our classic Oculus binocular vision is up. And that is part of the, the configurator here. Um, the other part is this, this graphical interface. So this is the configuration that goes into the flying app. You have basically five things. And each of those comes from its own category. So you have these configuration objects here. And this is a, a Chromium-based interface here that um, dynamically updates the, the underlying Python script that you're working on. So trying to keep it maximally simple, I was able to do this with, with five objects. So we have, we have three trackers. Uh, we have one display. We have one input. And we have a group. The group is this thing here. So I'll explain just what each of these pieces does. And then after that, we'll go in and we'll see, OK, how, how does the application script look for tying this all together and making it work? So we have the three trackers. We have the left arm, the right arm, and the Oculus tracker, which should not be forgotten. You see the hierarchical relationship, the, the scene graph relationship between these objects. The rift, we want to be the child of the rift tracker, right? So as goes the tracker, so too goes the rift display. And then in turn, we want that to be the child of this group here, what I've named the view control group, because that's the thing that we're going to end up getting and changing the position of to enable the fly as we move around. So we're off to a good start here. We see the underlying configuration. If I had changed anything when I close this out, the changes would be reflected. Maybe there's a conflict and you need to resolve it. But I've done it ahead of time, so I'm happy with how it's working. So those are the, let's see here. Those are the first two circles. And then we'll get to the final circle here, the classic. Python scripting, and I'll show you the application which managed to build in, in just about 60 lines, which is kind of nice. So we have some housekeeping business here at the top. We have some um, setup code where we import our the modules that we work from, and we load the scene. We then get that, get a hold of that viewpoint which is that group that I was referring to. That's the thing that we're going to be moving around. And then we have some code. Of course, we don't want to be flying all the time. We want to be able to stop and start. If you come and check this out afterwards, when we transition from one participant to the next, we want to be able to stop and start. Otherwise, when you set the thing down, you just keep flying off into infinity. So there's, there's that code at the top. And then here's where the real magic happens. I wonder if I could get all this on the screen at once. Just about. So we have this function, which I call update. And this is where we make the flying happen. So we ask, is the, is the user flying? Is, uh, and if so, then we do things. And the first two things that we do are we, we get those vectors from our configuration. And then having those arm vectors, we add them together element by element. Uh, we do a little normalization, and we, we scale it based on our max speed, which I set up here to 25 meters per second. Nice speed to be flying at. Then having our, our velocity in 3D, then as I mentioned before, we need to end up with a change in position. So we multiply the velocity by the, the time interval, or the elapsed time of the frame. And we add those together. I'm sorry, we multiply them element by element. We end up with a change in position. And then the final step is we set the new position of the view. You know, we increment it um, in a relative sense in its local coordinates. 
and then you're flying. Of course, you need to call this function every frame, which is line 63 down here. So that's, that's the app. And I'll show you what it looks like. See if we can fire it up. I'm suspicious here. Pardon me, bear with me for one moment. I had to reconfigure the connections of our sensors. So let's see here. Maybe it's doing its display thing again. to the two wrist sensors here. Oh, oh, oh. that may not have helped. <laughs> I heard the USB disconnect noise. Okay, so I think I'll call it a, a demonstration of the app there. And I would ask, I would ask for your imagination here as we fly around and for, for anyone who wants to come and try it themselves. Uh, maybe it's toying with me. Whoa. It works. Oh, we got one. We got two frames drawn. <laughs> this is a never before seen system. Okay. Well, we'll come here and we will conclude the talk. So, if you'd like to, if you, if you try it out and you like it, and you'd like to get the source yourself and play around with it, you're more than welcome to. Uh, you're welcome to get our um, Vizard VR engine and download it and try it for yourself. We're in the final stages of beta here, so it's, it's free to use. We welcome you to try it out for yourself and um, feel free to get in touch with me if you go down this road and, and want some guidance. Thank you very much.